What's going on Stripe Nation? Blake Alverson here with B&B Lawn Care. I like to say it's a beautiful morning, but it's actually kind of chilly, man. I've got a long sleeve and a jacket on, but we're doing something a little different. As you guys know, I went to the Aquascape Academy in I think February um, of this year, and uh, I'm finally putting in my first water feature. So it's something new to me. I've got Chris here, uh, and we're, we're gonna explain some more, but I just, I ripped out this plant and kind of raked back a little bit, but this is the before shot. So it's actually been like this for a couple days, so I'm happy to put something in, but I'm super excited about this. Natalie's home, what do you think? It looks good. Better than the plant? Yeah. <laughs> Chris, what's going on? How's bro? it going, good, man? Good, good, good to see you. All right, what are we putting in here today? So we got ourselves the medium stack slate urn. Um, this was one of our first fountainscapes that uh, was inspired by real slate that Brian and the guys had done a number of years ago. And so one of my favorite to install. Uh, we got the big four foot basin going into the ground here, and we'll uh, have this thing flowing with water in a matter of three hours or so. What the plan here is, what the design is for you, uh, Blake, is that it's out in front of your house. We want it to be a showpiece for come, people coming, walking back and forth. Now, if this was a typical design, I guess you should say an easy design, that would be, this would be standing on a patio paver, you know, a paver patio right here, and we would be able to set that basin right to grade, or just one or two inches below grade. I would recommend that at the end of this, uh, we go down and we pick out a couple of good landing stones or big boulders as accent boulders and that would kind of help blend in the transition right here uh, because that urn is gonna stand about this tall right out here and so that would create transition from uh, the concrete step down there and then we'll be able to put plants in all around this and then this is just gonna pop especially at night we get the fire going and then we get the up lighting coming on it You'll see water shimmering up on your ceiling and stuff like that, and then your your neighbors and stuff are just, you'll see them gawking. You'll see them walking their dogs on the other side of the road, and then they'll come back around this way, and they'll, they'll eventually get the courage to ask you about it, and that's what we want. We want to create awareness, so this is the perfect setting for, uh, for, you, for you guys here to enjoy. All right, guys, so the first thing, I had a plant here, so I ripped that out. We raked back some of the rock. We put the basin down and spray painted around it just so we know where we're going to dig. guys so we were digging for the basin and I had a drainage that comes down from the gutter down to here so I just kind of wanted to ask Chris what do you guys do in situations that it, all jobs aren't gonna be perfect you're always gonna run into something generally correct so generally right that's that's very abnormal for a job to be perfect right and just come in and it's coffee beans sugar grounds and then you're out of there you're something visual like this when you come out and you're designing You'll learn your trained eye will learn to look for drainage, things like that, or pop-ups. You'll kind of see them around your bed, uh, drain tile and stuff like this. This is like a minor, minor um, obstacle that we got to overcome. So when we run into this, something like this, let's pretend we didn't know this was coming down and going under there. We're digging, right? We're digging and thud, thud, thud with the, with the shovel. Well, you start cleaning around it, and then you you try to design on the fly, right? That's what we're kind of paid for as professionals, right? That's why homeowners bring us out. And we see, we try to find out, all right, so this basin, can I move it a little bit closer to the patio and avoid that altogether? Possibly, you know, but then I'm worried about splash and things like that right off or this being too close to the step. So what you also got to do then is just, okay, how can I problem solve? How can I troubleshoot this? Well, we're, what we're going to do in this particular case is we've removed the drain tile and we're going to reroute the drain tile either underneath this eave right here or we'll get a flexible pipe, you know, drain tile that goes around and then we'll reinsert the, the pop-up uh, drain right over there. So things you're typically going to run into on the job site that may delay it 10 minutes is telephone lines, electrical lines by DIYers, uh, you know, cable lines or drainage, something like this. 
So before you rip it out, determine, can I just tweak this basin a little bit to avoid it altogether, or do I have to get it out? And then, you know, just repurpose it, you know, up and around the basin. So small obstacle set us back, I think, five minutes. Is that what it got yep. us here? Yeah. So we'll rip it out, got to uh, get it out of here, and then we'll, once the basin is done and running, looking beautiful, then we'll reroute the new one. All right, so what we're going to do here, Blake, is just kind of dry fit her in there, see if we're close, if we got to shave, get the corners down. Okay, so it looks like, obviously, we clean up our edges. Um, and then it should sit like another six inches all the way down, and then we might be there at grade. We'll step back, we'll take a look at it. Um, so what, we just have to dig a little deeper? Clean up the edges, not okay. even deeper, I don't think. I think just clean up the edges. You okay. see how it's not sitting right? Yeah. I like how we have about two inches all the way around. We'll clean up this corner. That way we can backfill, bring in some loose fill, and then backfill in all the way around this thing. Okay. Um, and get it, now then we'll start working on the transition between grade and gravel and making sure it sits right and looks right. We've been taking out and putting the basin in just to see if it we if we dug deep enough and I think we're we're good right about now but kind of explain what the next process is. So once you got the the hole basically squared out eyeball to the level um, you know I'm gonna tamp this grade I'm gonna get it down it's kind of wet clay right now some uh, stone in there so I'm gonna tamp it level if you ever run into like a lot of roots or a lot of hard 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 pan clay or rock it's okay to dust the bottom of this with some grade sand you know or some limestone and then level it out that way but if it's good pan good clay like this you generally uh, just go ahead and tamp it level and this thing's not going anywhere so that's this stage right now just tamp it level rake it level and we're uh, we're off and running and we'll start uh, dropping her in and backfilling. So do you just kind of guess at first, tamp it down, get it as level as you possible, and then put the basin in and put the level and see where we're at? Yeah, you do enough of these, you eyeball it level okay. um, at first. You can walk around and kind of feel where it slopes. Uh, and then you rake it, you know, just fluff it up just a little bit or add some sand, just fluff it a little bit and level it that way. Yep. And, and so you do this process right now, correct me if I'm wrong, so whenever you put the feet, the water feature in, it's not sloped and, and only coming out one side. So like our urn would only be coming out on the left side if it was if Well, it was I, I would be able, I, exactly. So in a body of water, water is always going to level itself, right? So water is never going to be on a slope. So water will always rise level. If you got a low spot over here, it's going over this way, right? In a tub that's concealed, even if it's sloped a little bit, you don't want to practice this. But if it's sloped, you have enough water, you'll never see it. And then that urn that, that stands vertical, yeah, when you turn it on and it's not level, you'll see water going off this way. And then all I got to do is shim it level, right? Make okay. sure it's level again. So it's just critical. It's good craftsmanship. It's professional if you level the basin completely all the way around. You don't cut corners because those corners are what bite you in the end, right? Then you gotta come back out to a customer's house, the customer's not happy, so take your time, do, it's the last 10% that matters, you okay. know, and this is part of that 10%. Okay, so now that we eyeballed it in there, we just gotta make sure it's level square all the way around. Um, and so you drop the level on it all the way across. You can kind of see we're in the bubble if you want to zoom in on that. Make sure we're level there. You know, we're up. We got to slightly raise that up and that will happen when we backfill in. This side, you can see how that's level right there. So level square all the way around. Make sure there's no wobble to it at all. You know, it's solid, it's sturdy. It's not going to move around on you. And then we'll start shaving in the edges, backfilling, and then transitioning the grade around it. We're good to go. Right, guys so what you've seen we we leveled out the basin we backfilled all of the sides and just kind of brought up the dirt to be level with this and we just blew this off if we dropped any in there we just got it just so it doesn't 
mess up anything in the line. And now we're gonna unpackage the urn, lift it up and, and put it on there. All right guys, so basically we're just gonna be pulling out this urn. This is, so all this comes in a kit. So you're gonna get the basin, you're gonna get everything you need to get water flowing and, and, and put these and install these and get them up and working. So I think that's pretty cool. So you're not running around getting all these little pipes and things. Everything is in the kit when you buy it from your distributor. So I think that is pretty awesome. And then these these goodies over here, these are just add-ons you can do. If you guys want light, the fire add-on, the automatic dosing system to just keep it clear and clean. And uh, look at that. So now the fun begins. Then you just line up, you can see that arrow there, and then these arrows right here, these notches, you just line them up. Boom, give it a quick twist, like so. And then in high wind situations, which we might have here, when we run the plumbing, we can take the top half off there, take a couple of the gravel uh, pieces, put it down in there and weigh it, you know, weigh okay. it down. So if, you know, we, we have a westerly wind coming in this area, whipping through here, it, it doesn't shake or anything like that. Uh, it just anchors it completely. And then we're going to surround the bottom of it with pebbles as well. All right, Chris, I'll be honest with you. This, and for you guys watching, this is the part that kind of, you lost me because you know I can dig a hole I can do all that but plumbing just kind of freaks me out and I know that that probably freaks a lot of people out well to be honest not a lot of landscapers are plumbers right and they, right. they overthink it they kind of they kind of hyperventilate because you've never had to do it what what the beauty of having a kit is from aquascape is everything fits together as a family right and so there's only one way to hook this up there's only one way to plumb it so i'm about to call them all in your fears right now okay and it's going to be a head slapping moment for you because it's going to be so simple okay. so do me a favor just feed this down through the middle of the urn there okay and if you notice this one plumbing fitting on top of it uh this will nest nice and tight right down in there and it almost seals up the hole all the way okay but we're upgrading we're giving you an enhancement here I'm taking this fitting out and I'm putting a light that looks exactly like this okay. right on top of this. So when this bubbles up and it's churning, yeah. this is going to be lit up for you right on okay. top of it. So, so let's do that. But uh, if we, if you're not installing a light, then everything is already. There's no drilling holes. There's no putting anything together. It's all you just. You it's said there. it, man. It's okay. there. There's only one. It's a one-way street, man. Okay. You can only go one way. Okay. Down through the basin. Um, so let's drop on that light and then I'll watch you feed it through because it's Perfect. that easy. I kind of wanted to switch angles here just so you guys could see that the, the hole down there and everything what we're doing upgrading this. That's right man. So we're enhancing it. So do me a favor. I'm going to make you do this. Okay. Pop that part out right there. That's okay. garbage. You can get rid of it. Put okay. it in your pocket. You're going to drop this one. Feed that right through the plumbing line. Push it all the way snug down. Give it a twist about a half or a quarter turn twist. You got it on there. I think so. All right, so the beauty of these lights is that they're amphibious. Okay. They can go below water or above water. This cable is completely waterproof. The connection should be above grade, above water. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna feed this down through with the plumbing hose. So pull out your plumbing hose first. Pull it out. Pull that out, drop the, now just feed the wire through there. You got it. The driver goes right down, just keep on feeding. Feeding, feeding, feeding. Now drop that end in down along with it. Now the next thing, this is about as complicated as we're gonna get. I'm gonna I'm gonna tip this over. Now you're gonna feed that hose through the basin, and I want you to feed it in the direction of that uh, pump opening right there. Okay. Okay. So again, just kind of tip this down. gonna hold this right here now just feed it direction yep feed it down towards that pump vault feed the lighting wire down through there and then see if you can grab it through that opening Perfect. you got the plumbing going in that direction yep okay now I'm gonna tilt it up again okay 
And now you could just let that stuff just kind of rest right down in there because the next step, dude, is hooking up the other half of the plumbing. Okay, so what we got here is it's an 1100 gallon per hour pump. In the box is a one-stop shop. So obviously you're not gonna use all of these fittings in here, right? So we have a three-way valve that's in here that's meant for our three pillar Mongolian basalt columns, right? We have that fitting in there. We do have our adapters that are all threaded. So you just gotta find the right combination that's gonna happen within your particular setup here. This pump's gonna sit just like this down into the basin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this threaded piece right here and I'm gonna hand thread this down. Now, the first question plumbers will ask, do I have to seal that up with Teflon tape? No, you do not because it's submerged, okay? So truly, you can if you want to, but it's not needed. Just understand that it's all hand tight. Then we give you these gaskets in there. It's just what's found inside a, uh, a garden hose, right? This particular piece goes inside on the other side. And this is my 90 degree elbow. Once again, just hand tight right on there to where we can turn this whichever way the plumbing line is gonna go. It's gasket there. Now this is my fitting here that connects to my plumbing line. So now that pipe that you just fed through there I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna connect it. It's a good idea to have it somewhat loose for now because we need it flexible once it gets down in there. So we hooked all the plumbing parts together. Uh, everything's good to go here. I'm gonna drop this in. Oh, this is our lighting wire. I'm just gonna feed this out, get this out of the way. Here's our plumbing line that's right in here. So I'm gonna drop this in like so. Our plumbing line is right there as you can see. And I'm just gonna feed that onto the adapter. You know, like so. Now, I do not need any clamps right here because simply not enough pressure is going through from this pump through the plumbing line and out. So just push that on to where it's nice and snug. That's not coming down. It seats nice and cleanly down there. And then I pull out my, my lighting wire. We'll feed uh, right outside this top. And man, that is, is about as complicated as we're gonna get. So we just have to hand tight all of that? Just hand tighten it, right? So don't turn Hercules on it. You know, just hand tighten it and don't forget the gaskets. That's the biggest thing, just don't forget the gaskets. Those gaskets almost help you, prevent you from over tightening it too. Okay, so something we hadn't talked about was electricity, right? So we're not electricians. That's the last thing we wanna do. So this particular pump has 25 feet that we're able to get to an outlet. Um, so here we're within just a couple of feet, however, because we're not electricians, what we will offer is to hook it up on an ex extension cord afterwards until they can get an electrician out. What we'll even offer is a service to trench all the way to the electrical outlet, not do any of the connections, but trench to make it easy for the electrician to come in, lay conduit and hook it up. But hopefully we're within 25 feet to be able to plug it in. And here, Blake, uh, you made it easy for us. All right, guys, so we have it all plumbed up and uh, the pump in we put the cover back on and now we're just going to be taking the rock and filling it around you can pretty much put any rock as long as it's not too small and it will fall down into this where your water will be so basically we just made sure everything's level we put our light in and now we're filling up the basin just through the rocks with a hose all right so this is kind of an add-on to just make your water feature stand out so it's an awesome selling piece for customers because they're going to want to see their water feature at night right exactly so these are all enhancements here that are done after the project you know um this here, because you don't do lighting, this is so simple. All of these lights are daisy chained together. They're one watt direct lights. Again, they're amphibious, so they can be underwater or above water. And what's cool about these, because they're all daisy chained together, it's plug and play. This will plug into a splitter that goes in a transformer right here, but they also come with these cool landscape uh, stakes. And so we're gonna be able to strategically stake these lights it's shining at the urn here to where it's gonna pop from the curbside there and then it's simple little plug in here and it comes with its own photo cell which means it turns on at dusk 
turns off at dawn, or you can control it in multiples of four hours. Uh, if you only want it to shine until midnight, you can set the timer and only have it turn on at midnight. Okay, so we got the stakes on, the landscape stakes here. And obviously, you never want a light shining at you, right? When you're sitting, you're relaxing, or you're opening up a door. Uh, you don't want the light shining right at your eyes, so you strategically place them, you know, in the ground. You stake them down in there, and you kind of eyeball it, you know, to be in the ground. And then you tighten up the screw, and away you go. And then we'll just bury this line all the way over here, because this third light here is daisy chained. Now we'll bring this one up and over. Tuck this one in right behind this plant, maybe. Push down on it. And away we go. Loosen this up. You got 20 feet of cable here. Low voltage line. And we'll run this all the way over to the outlet. Okay, so the cool thing, Blake, is that we got the light on top of the urn and then the three lights that are daisy chained. So here are the two ends of my lighting things. Rather than taking up two outlets here, we're gonna put them in this splitter right here. Completely weatherproof. Again, plug and play. And now this one splitter allows me to put two, even three lights to one connection right there. So I find the prongs. Drop down, seat it, seal it up. Find the prongs, drop down, seat it, boom. Tighten it up all the way. Again, don't need to go Hercules on it. can kind of hear them getting tighter. And so what does this plug into? Now this will go into our transformer that has the same plug and play action that we got going on right there. So it's actually a transformer that's super simple and easy to plug in. This is right here, it's a low voltage 20 watt transformer. This goes in there, plugs in place, twist that, this plugs into your outlet, right? So, and there we go. All right, so I always wondered, like, how do you keep it maintained, clear, running good, clean? And uh, explain what this is, because I'm, I'm just totally in awe about so this. So this here is, is like the silver bullet for contractors, right? And that's what a lot of contractors fear is the callback, because their system just looks like crap. It doesn't look good, right? So the automatic dosing system, think of it as an IV bag for your feature. It adds the treatment for you. All you gotta do is plug it in, hook up the bag, and it will add it like an IV bag. On something like the dosing system for this basin, it treats it for 150 days. That's huge, and that eliminates callbacks for you know the contractor having to go out. In, in the past, homeowners would rely on you know, little pump top bottles and stuff to add them to the system, which is fine, which is okay, but human error comes into play here, right? So human will forget. You know, I work full-time job, long hours, you know, in the landscape industry, I'll forget from time to time. And if you forget, then you just gotta catch up, right? So this is how easy it is. You dial in how many gallons of pond or feature that you have, and then you hook up this system right here to the straw. Okay, so here's the top right here. Straw connects it right down to the bottom. I'm gonna feed this straw right into the treatment bag. I'm just gonna thread this on like so. So you said 150 days. That just means that you have to replace this bag in 150 days? 150 days, and it's okay. so cool. All you gotta do is basically take out the homeowner's cell phone, talk to Siri and say, Siri, remind me to change the treatment in 150 days and they'll get an alarm. That's so, what's so cool about it. You drop that guy right inside like so. This will snap down like this. This particular hose right here is the hose 
that goes into the basin. So this can hang on a house, hang on a four by four post. You can bury it, put it in an irrigation box, just to where you have, you basically set it for the season and you're good to go. Yeah, just kind of cup your hand over it like that. Oh, okay. Don't plug it. And then it will shoot up, hit your hand, just leave it there. Okay. And then it will eventually settle out, okay? Cool. Okay. Sweet. So there are shims available that you can push under here and you'll always have to kind of shim it to get it level and control the water, uh, you know, falling off all sides and stuff like that. So you can use rocks, you can push it in there, you can get shims, just kind of push it level and away we go. Okay, so this is what's gonna set it off, man. This here, we're gonna add fire to this feature pretty easily. So we're gonna take this canister, we're gonna use a clean burning oil that we're gonna put inside here. That's like a wick, right? So we're gonna put this in here. Like so. Grab this lighter, follow me over here. Watch how cool this is now. Obviously a lot cooler at night. So water still comes out through the sides of it, right? Once it gets a hold, it will grow a little bit more. You can see the water kind of just seeping off the sides there. That is awesome. Now your neighbors are gonna be jealous. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. That will get stronger and stronger. It only goes up about six inches there. Uh, what's important though, man, is you gotta get the clean burning oil, right? You don't okay. want the black smoke pluming up and stuff like that, the clean burning oil. And then all you gotta do to turn it down, basically put this lid right on top of it, you cut off the oxygen, then pull that right back and it's right back to a fountain. That's awesome. All right guys, I think it's official. I can wear my Aquascape Lifestyle t-shirt. Guys, check out their YouTube channel, man. Greg Whitstock, the pond guy. They're gonna teach you everything you need to know about waterfalls, water features, everything, ponds, and uh, they actually take you on vlog trips to meet customers' houses that have, have had Aquascape features installed, is that Li correct? Living the Aquascape lifestyle, that's probably our best testimonials out there is from homeowners living the Aquascape lifestyle, right? right. So, um, I don't know man, how do you feel? Dude, we plugged it in and we got it going. I think it's awesome, like, yep. this just changes just the sound and everything, I love it. It just changes the environment and the feel. There's, Once we start adding in some plants and stuff like that, it's just gonna change this whole front front of the house. Not only that, but it's also going to change the dynamic from inside your home because on nice fall days like this, you open up your windows or on spring right. mornings and days, you, you're gonna hear this throughout the entire house here, but right. this will completely change the dynamic of your of your home here now, right? We turned a house yep. into a home. Yep. Nobody in this entire subdivision, I bet, has ever seen anything like this. Right. You know, so that's the coolest part of it is you're gonna have, I was telling you earlier, those people walking by and seeing this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And so on a job we were kinda we were as we were doing this, we were kinda talking some pricing and things. So let them know like what so basically what you guys do is is you give the blueprint on how guys like me, lawn care guys, can go and start installing these and you even give like pricing. So like what's what is this? How much would you charge a customer to do this? Twenty eight hundred dollars. Twenty eight hundred. So twenty eight hundred dollars. There's a rhyme and a reason and a recipe, and I understand that city demographics matter. I understand that the economy matters and things like that, but twenty eight hundred dollars to transform a, a backyard, to transform a house into a home. Right. Um, man, you and I, we started, we were talking, what, 11 o'clock, 11.30 this morning. Yeah. We started, and we were 
kind of dinking around and talking and filming and doing those things and it is now 3 30 yeah that we got this thing plugged in so right um i'm excited for you to go out and talk to your customers about it hey what did they think about it you know i'm not asking you to go out and hunt new customers talk to the ones that already trust you that already love right. you that give you a handshake and offer you a meal every time you're on their property right so 2800 bucks four hours of work three hours if we're hustling you and i got a job to do and another job to get to um and then on top of that man what's beautiful is we still got a lot of daylight to burn here we can you know you had inspirations of adding in some boulders getting rid of this and adding landscapes right you can do that in the same day that's the coolest thing about this right uh particular feature here for me i actually went down to to aqualand their their headquarters and you guys how often do you give classes in, in the the academy so the academy that you're speaking of is six times a year we do it october november yeah. january february march and april that's the one that you came and then we have our big blowout contractor training called pandemonium that's always in august we offer that six times a year generally the winter months right but i'm curious to see what you thought about it because we can teach you how to dig a hole and set this up right but what aquascape really offers at the academy is a way to build a better business right so right. we basically give you a franchise without the franchise fee we show you how to do this we show you how marketing dude i wouldn't be surprised if greg invites you to come back to the academy and teach them how to youtube and vlog and do things like that because it's such a big part of the business right but we will teach you the franchise we will help you become a better salesman a better uh agent of your company just yeah. build a better healthy business so basically and, and what we're kind of getting at so and i'm going to be kind of like the a little test dummy here and showing people because i don't know like like i explained to you guys some of this stuff freaked me out like just the plumbing and that whole aspect of it and dealing with a pump and dealing with electricity and dealing with all this stuff because i my my day job is cutting grass so right. um you guys kind of just lay out that in, in pricing. People are like, what would I ever charge for this? Well, you guys, here you go. We give it to you. Yeah. We give it to you, right? And then the more you grow with it, the more you'll figure out, you know, you'll find your sweet spot. Yeah. And you'll know and understand your man hours. You'll know what it takes. Like just, there's a few tools. There's always, the video doesn't tell you the entire story, right? Right. We, we teach you at the academy the specific tools to help you become efficient. We teach you the academy on overhead and things like that. But we basically, you know, Greg Whitstock always says, how do you become successful? Do you ever hear him ask you that? Yep. Find somebody that does what you want to do and does it good and do what they do, right? Right. You don't try to recreate the wheel. You find a recipe, you follow the recipe, and that's how you become successful in your own hometown, right. so to speak. So, basically, there's you guys have videos. We have this video that we just created on how to actually do the work, but it's it's more than that when you're when you go to the academy and things like that. Because you guys are behind the scenes. Now I know how to do this, but it's like where where do you go from here? Right. So that's. If I can grind on you a little bit, right? Yeah. When did you come to the academy? Uh, February, I think. February, okay. This was step one. Yeah. February, it's now November. Yeah. Don't skip step one. Right. Get it in your own home. Understand the little nuances, right? Yeah. Get it in your own home. That's where you go the first step. The next thing I'm gonna tell you to do, go to your one customer that loves you, treats you like a son, gives you a hug, offers you a meal. Yeah. Ask them to get this, your first one for a client. Yeah. Get it into the ground. Now you got two under your belt. And then we take you, two becomes four, four becomes eight, you just double everything. Right. We're, we offer marketing for you, custom marketing. You know what? It's water features you need to understand. Water features are sold, they're not bought. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because people don't see this all the time. So you right. you really have to convince the homeowner, but you now live with it. Yep. Your wife is gonna be a huge testimony for right. you. You working 80 hours a week sometimes right. is gonna be the testimony that this will change your life. So that is the best step, is that you get them in public places, yep. you get them in areas that people are gonna see them, and then you hand out flyers. You never know what's gonna work in the area, but you have to sell it. You have to talk about it to every project 
uh, you know, for lawn mowing. I know the last thing you want is one of your employees off the mower. Right. Give me 30 seconds. Right. Walk up to them, shake their hand, find out if there's anything else they can do, hand them a flyer and say, hey, we're looking to grow our company. Is this something you might be interested in? Yep. My my boss, Blake, if so, he'll give you a buzz and come on out, have a conversation. Right. It's not a pressure sale. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you two things real quick, because one, and, and everybody would know this, I don't like change. Like it takes me, I mean, you have to come and help me install something for me to, to change. So I always tell you guys this, if you have something you're thinking about doing, you have to do it. Like, like you were saying, step one, and I have. Like I've almost waited a whole year since I learned how to do these to do it. I mean, it's almost like I was kind of scared to start. Like, just like everyone is when they, they want to go from their job to owning their own business. And um, and even from now, now that I know this, I mean, it's like, now I just start selling. I light your hair on fire. Yep. Now it's up to you. And we hold your feet to the fire, right? In a good way, right? right. That's the beautiful thing about Water Features. We have certified Aquascape contractors out there that can mentor you, that right. can help you. Our Facebook page for contractors, once you become certified, you, they will urge you and motivate you to take that first step, that initial step. Right. You might get rejected your first five times, yeah. 10 times. Stay the course, right? Just think about when you first started your business with your brother, you were saying, right. stay the course and your business will grow. Hit a chewable goal. And what I mean by that, we talked about one a month. Yeah. Try to sell one a month, third Saturday of the month, however you want. Just try to do that. And that's how, how you sell it, is just by talking and believing, right. talking about your water feature. Right. Hey, what's what's this thing gonna do, Blake, in the springtime or in the wintertime? Well, in my house, I actually, I go ahead, I disconnect the pump, I put it in the garage. Yeah. Or I'll leave it running as long as I can in the wintertime. And I'll do this and this. And when they hear you say, well, I live with this, I right. have this, that's just all the confidence that they need to hear, right? Right. That it's not going anywhere, it's a quality product, um, but you're also backed by the fact that your wife loves it, that you love it, and stuff right. like that. That's it, man, that, that is how you do it. And, and if you guys have any more information, guys, go to Greg Whitstock, the pond guy on YouTube, and first off, you're gonna, you're gonna love Greg. Like, his, just his, he's so on his vision and, and just so passionate about what he does like it's infectious like when you're around him you just like you're you're lifted up a little bit energy yeah energy it, that's all it is it's crazy so and he's he's a good guy like he will help you whatever you want to do he will help you if you want to get into ponds like like I said, I was scared, but like I, even if we you did just want to do this, yeah, I'm not even saying ponds. Yeah, you didn't yeah, hear me yeah. say ponds right, or water right, ball. Right, like right. even if you just want to do this, right? Um, his greatest sa satisfaction in life is watching you succeed, man. Right. He right. hooked up with you at the GIE show. He's been on you, and it it took a lot for that first step, but man, yep. here we are, and yeah, come to the academy again. Yes. Because now that you've got that under your belt, that fear is gone. Right. Now you can come and just focus on how do I market? How do right. I get this in other homes? Right. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Like, if you're like me, listen, we're, let's 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 think things through together so we can. I mean, this we're talking. You're deep in the video now. I mean, what what kind of percent margins are we talking about here? Profit margins. So again, it depends on demographics depends, and things like yeah. that. But if you're a landscape professional, you're creating art here, right? Yes. So an artist kind of charges what they right. feel they're worth, yeah. you know? And so your margin is 50% right. on, on something like this. But it's not easy work. I'm training you to become efficient. I'm right. training, I'm, I'm teaching you how to do this efficiently. To because where the you're longer not, you're on the job, oh. the less your margin is. Yeah. So. We're just talking hypothetical. You're making, and this is where Greg, this is what Greg really hammers down on me for. You're making a lot more money than you are cutting grass. And so, and and what we're discussing here is is sell one a month because you're you're going to be adding more money to your business by doing this by in the simple form, digging a hole and putting something in. It's more than that, but you know, in yeah. the simplest way, that's what we did. So. Let's just say three thousand dollars installed. Yeah. Times nine months. Right. One a month. 
Yeah. Twenty seven thousand to your bottom line, man. Right. So and that's that's what kinda gets me like, oh man, this is kinda this is fun. Aren't let's, you going on a honeymoon in yep. a couple of weeks? Yep. Right. Twenty seven thousand dollars can yeah. help help you out a lot. Absolutely. So, so yeah. We already it, got man. traffic stopping here. I know. Taking a look at it, it's pretty awesome. The one last thing to to help market and sell these even further is when you install something beautiful like this you got to make sure they get a welcome kit because you don't want to leave them high and dry without right. information what we're really good at is helping you promote water features but giving the homeowner everything they need to be able to educate themselves here's a little piece about inspiration here's a thumb drive right here that teaches them everything spring summer fall winter lighting yeah. automatic dosing systems even supplemental treatments and then also a coffee mug there that says i love my water feature what i'm going to ask you to do is i'm going to ask you to put your sticker right there yeah right your contact information same with that and then you leave it with the homeowner right right on so, so. it kind of it, it's like a follow-up and it just says it's like a thank you it's a thank you man it's yeah. a great presentation to say hey here you go because once a homeowner is bitten by the water feature bug, right, they'll go through two, three, and four in you, their lifetime. What'd you tell me? Big, bigger, and biggest. That's it. All that's right, the way to go, man. That's awesome. All right, Chris, that's it, man. I, I that's it. We're we're living the Aquascape lifestyle now. I'm super excited. I cannot wait to get that fire on there. I Thank think you. that is absolutely awesome. But I appreciate it, man. So guys, make sure you check out Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy on YouTube. There it is. And uh, that's it. All right. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.